below students, and this video will prove the Sylvester rank inequality. Let's let A, B, and M by K matrix B, B, A, K by N matrix. Then A, B makes sense. I have an M by K and the K by N is an M by N matrix. Great. The Sylvester rank inequality states the following. Sylvester rank inequality states that the rank of A plus the rank of B minus K is less than or equal to the rank of A times B. That's the Sylvester rank inequality. So let's prove it, okay? And so here's the idea. I'm gonna use the rank nullity theorem, right? So let's do that. So recall, recall that the nullity of A plus the rank of A is gonna be the dimension of the input space. So the dimension of the input space for A is gonna be K. The nullity of B plus the rank of B is equal to what? It's gonna be equal to N. And then finally, A times B is an M by N matrix, right? So the nullity, nullity of AB plus the rank of AB, the rank of AB, is also equal to n, okay? So here's what we're gonna do, we're gonna add these inequalities together. So this is by rank null, this is the rank nullity theorem. I've used it three times. Great. And so now we're gonna concatenate these inequalities over here, what will they tell us? So let me add these together. I'm gonna be able to conclude that the nullity of A, nullity of A, plus nullity of B, plus rank of A, rank of B, plus rank of A, plus rank of B is equal to K plus N, right? Just by adding these first two qualities over here. Now, of course, I can replace N with this statement over here, right? So nullity A, nullity of A, plus nullity of B, <clears throat> plus rank A, rank B, rank A, plus rank B, is equal to, and in fact, let's just write it out what this thing is equal to over here. We just, we can save ourselves a little bit of writing, so let's just do that, right? Don't want to be redundant over here. So let's just write that this over here is equal to what? So this is equal to K plus N, but we know that N is this thing over here, so it's nullity, uh, nullity of AB plus rank of AB plus rank of AB, okay? Now we're in a good position over here because on the right-hand side I have rank of A, rank of B, right? On the, on the left-hand side I have rank of A, rank of B. On the right-hand side I have rank of A, and I have this K over here, right? So of course I can take this K over here and sort of put it right over there, and those are equivalent statements over there, right? And so now what I need to show, I need to show that the nullity, that this thing over here, I need to show that what? Well, if I put the negative k over here and the rank of k over here, I need to show that nullity of a, b minus nullity of a, nullity of b is greater than or equal to zero, right? So in other words, if we rearrange this over here, rearranging this, we'll get the following. We'll have nullity of a, so nullity a plus nullity of b minus nullity of a, b is equal to what? So I put all the nullities on one side is equal to k plus null plus rank of a b and then minus rank of a rank of b minus rank of a minus rank of b okay and so what do I want to show over here? I want to show that k plus the rank minus these things I want to show that this is greater than or equal to zero right? That's our goal. That is exactly what the Sylvester rank inequality says. So I need to show that the nullity of A plus the nullity of B is greater than or equal to the nullity of A times B, right? So we need to show that the nullity of, so in other words, this is greater than or equal to zero. Our theorem is true if and only if 
nullity a b over here is less than or equal to nullity of a nullity of a plus nullity of b okay great so what we're going to do is let's let this is what we need to show over here so let's let v1 vp be a basis of the null space of B, okay? So in other words, what that says, that says that the nullity of the nullity of B is gonna be equal to P, right? Nullity of B is equal to P, great. Now, of course, if you're in the null, the null space of B is contained in the null space of AB, contains the null space of B, right? Because if you're in the null space of B, then you're in the null space of AB, right? So note that the null space of B, if you're in the null space of B, then you're also in the null space of A times B, because if you're in the null space of B, then B of that vector will give you zero. So if B of that vector gives you zero, then B, then B of that vector plugged into A will still give you zero, right? So we're gonna extend this, so extend, extend this to a basis of null of A times B, right? And so what we'll get over there is we'll have V1 up to VP, and then VP plus one up to VP plus R, right? So for R potentially, so R could be zero if they're the same, or R could be bigger than zero if there's more things in the null space of A times B, right? And now we claim that B of these vectors over here is linearly independent. Claim B of V P plus one B of V P plus R is linearly independent. Okay. So how do we prove that over here? So we prove that by supposing that they, looking at the coefficients, so if I have lambda one, b, v, p plus one, plus all the way down to lambda r, b, v, p plus r equals zero. Well, that would say that lambda one, v, p plus one, and then all the way down to less lambda r, v, p plus r is in the null space, right? So what that would say is I would say that lambda one, v p plus one plus all the way down to lambda what lambda r v p plus r is going to be equal to a is in the null is that's going to be in the null space of b and v1 through vp is a, is a basis of the null space of b so this is going to be equal to what it's going to be equal to say sigma one v1 plus what plus sigma p v p like that okay excellent and so now what i have over here is i have a combination of v1 through vp plus r which gives me zero right by throwing all those sigmas on the other side of the equation over here but that is a what that's a linearly independent that is a basis of this set so that's going to force all these coefficients to be zero so this is going to force lambda one to be equal to lambda r to be equal to zero. And that proves that this set is linearly independent, which says what? Which says that I have at least what? I have at least p minus r, I have at least r extra things in the null space of what? In the null space of a, b. So this says the, that says that the null space, so the nullity of a, b, so, and what can I say? I can say, if I plug in any of these vectors into the matrix A, so if I plug in B of V P plus one, B of V P plus R into A, that gives me zero. That says the nullity of A, nullity of A is at least R, right? It's bigger than or equal to R. Great, so now what do I have over here? So now I have the nullity of A, B. So let's look at star over here. So nullity of A, B, so that's gonna be what? That's gonna be P plus R. That's the nullity of A times um, A to B, right? Is less than or equal to P. Well, what's P? P is the nullity of B by assumption over here. So we have the basis. So P is the nullity of B. So that's going to be replaced with the nullity of B. 
nullity of b. And then nullity of a, because a is nullity of a is bigger than r. So nullity of b plus nullity of a. It was just proven, therefore, that the nullity of a times b is less than or equal to the nullity of a plus the nullity of b. And since this inequality over here, star, is equivalent to this being greater than or equal to zero, we've exactly proven the Sylvester rank inequality of the rank of a plus the rank of b minus k, that intermediate dimension between the two of them, is less than or equal to the rank of the product a times b. Thank you very much.